Hello, welcome to Science Communication Project. So here we are, um, looking at our project, remembering that we're trying to measure the rate that caffeine is released by tea in some condition. So what I've done now in the meantime is I've decided to use tea bags and I've taken a few measurements. But first of all, we're going to have a look at some measurements that I've done on caffeine. So hopefully by this time you've all looked and seen the possible papers and the mechanism for measuring caffeine that I suggested, which is uh, spectroscopy. So going over to this other screen, we can see that I've measured in the uh, visible and ultraviolet region, this bottom axis unlabeled, sorry about that, is the wavelength in nanometers. And you can see that caffeine, the blue curve, has a very wobbly bit of spectrum down here. That's because the spectrometer isn't very good and it's not very accurate when it's uh, either not measuring very much absorbance or when it's measuring very, very high absorbance. So that's why this spectrometer is very wobbly down here. But we can see here, there's a very big absorbance. It seems to be cut off and distorted. That's why it's looking weird. So we have to do something about that. And if we look at T, we can see that T absorbs a lot of light, so absorbance is up. So a higher amount of absorbance means less light comes through. It's a log scale, and it's a log scale because then the concentration is linear with absorbance. So that's a special part thing to do with this type of spectroscopy that uh, we need to use, but we don't need to understand why. Um, so we can see here that if I take neat T, it absorbs a lot of light, all across the spectrum and it's difficult to see what happens down at the caffeine region. If we dilute the tea, it absorbs less light up here in the red region. 800 is red, um, so that's the higher end of um, visible light and then we get lots of absorption down here and it does something very similar, so something weird is happening. It's probably not working very well, the technique. So let's have another look. So I had to do some more measurements. What else have I done? There's my diagram two. So now it's absorbance again, but this time I've diluted the T again and I measured it more carefully and I've allowed it to equilibrate more and I used a you know, much more diluted version. And what we can see is the caffeine is the same shape as before, but the end at the higher wavelength is much smoother so that's good I managed to get that to work properly if we take some tea it goes up in absorbance and then where it was cut off and went weird before I can get it to show better and if we dilute it again we see that it shifts across or it appears to shift across so this peak is also probably still cut off but this edge is now coming on to focus and it suggests that I will have to dilute the tea to measure it. If we dilute the caffeine, that's blue, then very little happens. So obviously I had a very high concentration of caffeine for that and it was only a couple of crystals in a milliliter. So not very much at all. But if I diluted it a very large amount, this was about 100 times dilution, it got down and showed me this shape which looks like a proper absorption peak so if we manage to get it down to here that's good and this is very good because this amount is about the amount in a cup of tea uh, we expect about 50 milligrams so if we have to dilute it by a factor of 100 that's good because then it means that we can measure it much more easily in our real solution so what we can also see is that there's still difficulty because absorption of 0.9 means 90% um, of the light is absorbed. And the absorption of 1 would be 90% of the light that's being absorbed, but it's already distorting our spectrum. That is um, not very good for spectroscopy, and it was because I used our sort of C version of spectro uh, spectrometer. So it's a sort of general one for teaching. Um, I used it because we've got two of those, so it will be easier to use. But uh, it's obviously not going to be very effective if our concentration goes up. And because we're extracting the caffeine, we may have trouble 
with the concentration passing its limits because it got, it's gone weird here. This is a dilution of a factor of two and nothing happens. So we need the shape to look like this, otherwise we can't measure it at all. So if we go into diagram three, I used a better spectrometer for this. Whoops. Uh, so I've flipped it over in this case and I'm trying to measure something else. So maybe I'll explain this first. So this is the amount of light going through in percent. It may be easier for you to understand. I've presented it in this way so that we can see better the T concentration because I'm thinking of a further thing to do. So you can see now if I have a thin layer, this is, I call it short, this is a short path length. So this is one milliliter, one millimeter of path length. And the T has an absorption curve here. It's absorbing all the light. That's why it says none. And here it's absorbing none of the light. That's why it says 100. So if we have a short path, we get a relatively obvious step. And that is neat out of the T. If we have a long path, it absorbs all the light and we see nothing. And what I'm interested in here is, can we measure the concentration of the brown components of the T quickly and easily with this method? And we probably can. We just have to choose a wavelength down here at 600 or 700. Probably not 700 because 700 appears to be doing nothing. So somewhere here, um, not next to that spike. So here maybe. Um, and use that to determine our concentration of T as a measure of how brown the T is to give us a number. We will have to convert it to absorption units again because that is the standard for concentration. But um, this is just to show us how much light is getting through and to present the data in a different way. I've forgotten to draw the um, wave length on again and in this case the spectrometer goes out a little bit further in both directions so we can also see other things happening we could try to use this peak so that's quite good Stop. okay so i've tried to record video uh, audio for this several times so this is me making tea using a tea bag this time to slow down the, the extraction because when we added leaves it came out far too fast and it wasn't realistically like a normal tea making process. So this is a tea bag with a stirrer. The stirrer is to make it more reproducible and also to mix up the tea coming out so that we can take samples over time. It's 200 milliliters and one tea bag which ends up with quite weak tea we could make it a bit stronger um, at this sample it's sort of similar to how Germans tend to drink it it's a little bit weak for English people or Turkish people for example so uh, we could make it twice as concentrated for example that wouldn't hurt if we're taking out samples to measure the darkness of the tea which is probably the easiest thing to do to start with we can do that over time because the samples are only 30 microliters and it's 200 milliliters. So it will take a long time to use one whole percent of the volume. So uh, as you can see, it's got fairly brown now. It's been about a minute. So over a minute, the color develops. Um, it will get slightly darker and we'll be able to see that with the spectrometer better. So I'm going to let this finish. I'm going to try saving this because I've recorded this audio three times and it's broken every single time. So I'm going to try it again.
Another try now, and at this time we're running at the lower temperature, it's about 70 degrees, I think. Um, it's slightly out of focus, sorry about that. So I'm trying to slow down the reaction. I'm going to now add the tea bag. Oh, yeah, I'm going to speed this bit up. Hang on. So back to normal speed, we're now going to put the tea bag in. As you can see, it's not nearly as fast. The brown isn't coming out as quickly to start with. Although, looking at the time of the two clips, it takes about the same time in total. So we can see it coming out. Um, we can see it's going brown. Um, there was a little bit more time to start with. And you, uh, also, I've left the tea bag a little bit above the level of the water, so it may be a really bad plan. So we have to think about that when we do our actual measurements. That's one of the other things that can go wrong. So maybe we will have to set up a way where the top of the tea bag is level with the top of the beaker. Then it will always be at the same position. So now it's going browner and browner. We would comp compare this after the same time with the other one to see whether we can see a difference. I think it took longer, but um, it doesn't look it at the moment. Okay, I've gone back and looked at them both, and what I see is very little. They both take about two minutes to develop their full colour, and the full colour isn't massively different. So there isn't obviously something that changes in those 10 degrees, although chemically there should be. So I suggest that we consider that as one of the variables in our study. Obviously, if we make it too cold, it won't make tea very quickly, but uh, within this range. Okay, so let's have a look at this. We've got a spectroscopy part where I measured it first of all using a spectrometer called the Red Tide, which is a sort of student-friendly spectrometer. We have two of those, but it turns out that it's not that great. Now I'm just checking that I'm on screen. Yeah, it turns out that it's not that great. It overloads very quickly, and so we can use a second spectrometer, which is called the, uh, I think it's called the 2000 which is slightly better. Still we see that, uh, so T brown absorbs uh, everything out to, uh, to red to about uh, 600, somewhere nanometers. So um, caffeine, in uh, peak is at 275 nanometers. Let's put nanometers there as well. So that means we have to extract. So it's not possible to measure. So uh, the caffeine in the tea with the tea still in there. Must extract caffeine to measure. And measure 
brownness, brownness at, well, let's put a close my thing at longer wavelength. So we'll have to work out exactly where that is when we do it. So that's our spectroscopy, um, short path cell works well. So I can measure at one millimeter better than one centimeter. And that's good because if we have a one millimeter path length, the volume in our cell is very small, which means that the volume of our T doesn't change very much if we remove a sample from it. So that's all good. So those are all good things. Let us have a look at the experiment. So it's quite nice that T experiment has the parameters of T, capital T and small t. That would be time and temperature. So at uh, low temp, um, oop, damn it. Not actually sure what happened there. At low temperature, um, what do I want to say now? At low temperature rate does not appear to be much different, but it might be very different for the caffeine removal. Um, so um, temperatures also uh, stirring, stirring and tea bag. Bag seemed to me to be good, me to be uh, a good, a good compromise. So it's a compromise between a completely experimental setup, which we had before, where we're stirring the tea leaves, and that would be a good way to get out the most caffeine possible, but it's a bad way to make tea. And uh, if obviously a we take a standard tea situation, then we've got the uh, sort of concentrated tea at the bottom of our container and we've got water at the top and that's not very good for measuring over time. So I think that stirring in a tea bag are a good compromise. Um, still problems, problems, temperature. So we don't really know what temperature to use. Um, and um, sample volume. Right. So to measure the darkness of the tea is not very difficult because we can take a very small sample because it's very dark and it's easy to measure. If for the um, caffeine concentration we can't do that because if we take a sample we will change the volume. We need to take a relatively large sample to measure the amount of caffeine in there. So we we could do two different time scales or, or multiple experiments. We need to make a decision there. We need to plan our experiment for how often are we going to measure it. If we take a milliliter and measure the amount of caffeine in there, if it's a 100 milliliter container, we're changing the concentration by 1% every time. So we're not going to get more than five samples before we start to significantly change the concentration. So there we're only going to get five points on our curve. If we do 200 milliliters and two tea bags, maybe we can get more po points. That's a good idea. Um, so then we can get more points on our curve. Um, so probably two thinking about this, 200 milliliters, one mil samples. So we should check whether a one milliliter sample is enough to measure the amount of caffeine. It does seem to be super sensitive to caffeine concentration, but uh, obviously if we don't measure it, then it's difficult. So we might have to do test. Uh, in that case, we don't have to do the whole 200 milliliters or maybe two liters and 10 tea bags, uh, a liter and 10 tea bags. It might be even better. One liter, 10 bags. 
they, um, then we can is a suggestion. Then we can get more points and measure both the caffeine concentration and the um, color at the, in the same measurement. Um, and the other advantage of having a large volume is the temperature is more constant. So that's my current suggestion. And then we come to what are we going to measure? So if we're measuring measuring caffeine and brownness, which would be um, a at some wavelength versus time um, and temperature. Temperature that would give us a two-dimensional curve. So we, if we have um, what three-dimensional curve, effectively a surface plot. So we would have time on the x-axis, temperature on the forwards axis, and caffeine concentration on the z-axis. So the caffeine concentration will go up and go constant, up and go constant over time. And the brownness should do much the same. So it gets browner and browner to start with very quickly, and then it stops getting browner. But the time constant of both of them should be different, or could be different, and they could be affected by temperature differently. So what temperatures do we want to use? Well, um, 90 is a good temperature. 100 is a very difficult temperature, because it's then boiling and it's moving around. So 90. 95 perhaps um, we had 70 if we go much lower it's going to go very slow so um, maybe 80 70 90 80 70 60 would be four measurements that uh, would be quite a lot so first of all we should do some test measurements of how much caffeine can we actually extract from our coffee. Can we measure it? Tea, sorry. Can we measure it in our measurement? So there we go. Let me stop and sum this up. Now let me go to a last page and sum this up. Oops. So summary. So uh, this is my suggestion. Uh, so consider experiment make uh, one liter of tea with 10 bags and stirring take samples for two minutes, two minutes. So um, we need probably more at the beginning and less at the end. So, um, but even so, every 15 seconds is gonna be difficult anyway. So practically I'm going to struggle to take them faster than that anyway. That's only eight samples. Um, and we would like, um, but we have to check the volume first. So that would be, uh, and then measure, measure uh, brownness, ness, and uh, caffeine. Variables, variables, temperature, uh, variables to, to fix, water, gas. So the var variables that I want you to think about are what do we do with the water? Do we use tap water? Do we use some other type of water? Do we use distilled water? And um, what kind of gas do we want? So shall I pre-boil it? Shall I remove the gas from it? Shall I bubble some nitrogen through it to remove the oxygen? That will prevent it from changing in color it shouldn't react with the caffeine anyway, but it will help the color to be more stable. 
Um, I think probably yes, but it's up to you. You're in charge of this experiment. So over to you.